Hello, and welcome to today's tutorial on getting started with RunPod and Stable Diffusion. In this tutorial, we'll walk you through the steps to get set up. So let's get started. RunPod is a platform that provides an easy way to run Stable Diffusion. To get started, you'll need an account, so be sure to use the link provided in the video description to sign up. Once you have an account, log in to the RunPod console. You'll see that the menu is organized into two main concepts, GPU Cloud and Serverless. These options provide different ways to access and utilize computing resources. Let's start with GPU Cloud. This option allows you to easily deploy a new instance of Stable Diffusion. Within GPU Cloud, you'll find two options, Secure Cloud and Community Cloud. Secure Cloud is a little more expensive and is recommended if you need fast response times and high availability. On the other hand, Community Cloud provides a lower cost option. Let's select Community Cloud as our option. You'll then be presented with a list of computing resources. If you want more details about these resources, check out the helper file, link in the description. For this tutorial, let's choose the RTSA 5000 and click Deploy. After selecting the computing resource, you'll be prompted to choose a Stable Diffusion version. We recommend selecting RunPod Stable Diffusion 1.5 plus V2, as it comes pre-built with the 1.5 version of the model as well as the 2.0 version. Once you've made your selection, click Deploy. Now you can monitor the deployment progress by clicking on Logs. Once the log activity dies down, you can close the log window and click on Connect. Choose Connect via HTTP port 3000 to access Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111. Congratulations! You're now inside Automatic 1111. You can enter prompts and generate responses using the model. Feel free to explore the capabilities of Stable Diffusion and experiment with different inputs. When you're done with Stable Diffusion, it's important to stop the instance to avoid unnecessary charges. Simply click on the stop icon to stop the instance. Note that you'll still be charged for disk storage while the instance is stopped, but at a much lower rate. If you want to avoid storage charges as well, be sure to click terminate after stopping the instance. Now let's talk about the serverless option. Serverless provides on-demand access to AI computing resources, and you're only charged for the actual usage. It's a cost-effective choice for certain scenarios where you want to build and host your own API. If you're interested in learning more about serverless, I created a step-by-step -step tutorial. Link is in the description. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If you enjoyed it and found value in the content, please consider subscribing, giving a thumbs up, and leaving a comment with any questions or feedback you may have. Your support means a lot to us and helps us create more valuable tutorials like this one. We are here to help, so don't hesitate to reach out if you need any further assistance or have specific questions. Until the next.